Article 6 AM, officially calling this meeting to order, attending our commissioners, uh, Duncan Brooks and Filios. And I'm going to ask Mary Shaw if you would please lead us in the pledge. Okay then, do we have any conflicts of interest? No. Hearing none, okay, any changes to the agenda? None, proceeding. These are deliberations and during deliberations, uh, it's between staff and the Board of County Commissioners. There is no public testimony. Uh, and presumably it's already been heard. And so we'll begin with our first case, which is CUP, which stands for Conditional Use Permit. 20-0008, a request by Greens Ferry Water and Sewer District for a conditional use permit to establish a public utility complex facility on an approximately 0.918 acre parcel in the agricultural suburban zone. Zach, do you want to take it away, please? Good morning, Commissioners. Planner Zach Trevino for the record. Case number CUP 20-0008. As Commissioner Filio said, this is for a public utility complex facility, specifically a booster pumping station. The subject parcel is slightly under one acre in size, and it's located south of Riverview Drive, uh, across the river, Spokane River from the city of Post Falls, uh, in a residential neighborhood. The subject parcel currently has two reservoirs on site, owned by Green Ferry Water District, um, used to store water and serve its uh, connections. The proposal involves adding a booster pumping station to these uh, reservoirs in order to enhance fire flows. Uh, the connections that the district serves uh, are steadily increasing, and in order to make sure that there's adequate water pressure to serve those connections in the future, they need to add this bo booster pumping station. And so uh, this site plan depicts uh, both the existing reservoir, there's a rec rectangular reservoir, uh, in the center of the parcel, and then there's a cylindrical reservoir uh, closer to the eastern edge of the parcel. And south of that cylindrical reservoir is where the booster pumping station will be located. Uh, it will be housed in an approximately 100 square foot uh, structure, and uh, will the ground on which it is housed is, is relatively flat. Um, access is gained via a driveway extending across uh, an adjacent parcel to the east, but access is limited to routine maintenance and service, and so it's um, not, not regularly trafficked. Um, agencies with jurisdiction have commented on this, and there were no, no objections. Um, staff has analyzed the request and determined that it does meet the performance standards contained within the code, and the hearing examiner recommended approval based on that and the fact that this will have minimal impact on surrounding property owners. And so uh, I could go into further detail if you wish, but I stand for any questions you may have. Questions? I don't. <coughs> okay. So this is a booster station. So uh, how many lots are being served by the primary provider? The district has approximately 400 connections. Okay. Uh, it is increasing. Uh, one of the uh, major developments in the area is is uh, just to the northeast, the River um, Riverview Heights. It's a major subdivision that was recently approved, and that's one of the the reasons that this uh, expansion is taking place, although this specific request is not just related to that subdivision, it, it'll serve the entire um, district's customer base. So for the benefit of everyone, and especially folks listening in, what is the primary function of a booster station? Does it add capacity? It, it adds flow uh, rates, so it, it'll enable an increased water pressure in case there's an emergency such as, say, a fire, um, they'll be able to pump that water faster and at higher volumes to serve those those connections. And so um, the existing reservoirs, of course, um, you know, uh, together store 220,000 gallons. One's 120,000 gallon, one's 100,000 gallon. And with the booster station, they'll be able to pump that water out to those connections at a faster rate. Okay. I read the the nice packet you put together, but I, and I, I missed it because I'm sure it's in there. Um, what is the flow rate? now versus what it's going to be i mean is it is it like here and going to be here or is it here it's going to be here 
So uh, I, I can't speak to the flow rate in terms of, of gallons per minute or anything like that. Um, <laughs> I would have to look into that. Uh, but no, you it, don't need it is a significant difference according to the applicant's narrative. And uh, just maybe to kind of bolster that statement, um, the Department of Environmental Quality did recommend that this be approved for the reason that, and th th this, I'll, I'll quote them directly, um, the DEQ supports the CP and recommends its approval as the infrastructure is necessary to provide adequate potable water and fire protection services mm -hmm. to a portion of the district's water system. So um, even though I, I can't speak to the specific quantifiable That's difference, okay. it's significant. That's okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Leslie? I'm fine. So am I. Motion. I move we approve case number CUP. 20-0008, a request by Greens Ferry Water and Sewer District with the conditions as received by the hearing examiner. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. CUP 20-0008 is hereby approved. Thank you, Zach. Second item. Thanks very much, Commissioners. You're very welcome. Case number VAR, which is a variance, 20-0005, First Light Properties, LLP, for a 25-foot variance to the 25-foot front yard setback on a quarter-acre parcel of land in the agricultural suburban zone. Mary. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners. Thank you. Um, this is case number VAR, 20 a request for variance to the minimum required setbacks in the agricultural suburban zone. The property is located um, as a platted lot within, um, on the east side of the Lake Coeur d'Alene and west of uh, State Highway 90, consists of about a quarter of an acre. This is the applicant's proposed site plan the applicant is requesting a variance to the minimum required setbacks due to excessive steep slopes uh, creating site constraints. And um, if approved, the request will constitute a 25 foot variance, which will allow a structure to be constructed 25 feet from the center line of Silver Beach Road. Okay. These are some site photos that depict the steep topography supplied by the applicant, various views and pretty evident of the excessive slopes. This is our GIS mapping information mm -hmm. that shows um, the uh, green indicates 10 to 15 percent slope, the red is 15 to 30 percent slope and greater. Um, this is not precise, but it's a pretty clear depiction. Location of the subject property in relation to other variance applications that have been approved in the immediate area. As you can see, the yellow stars are all placed on parcels, lots within the area that have had variance applications approved for setbacks. And I will stand for any questions. Leslie, Bill? Uh, no questions. I just, uh, one of the things I see happening over and over as I have more of these is people buy a piece of property and knowing full well they can't do what they want to do on it and they expect to get a, a variance uh, yeah obviously we grant them judging by the number of stars there but i don't know whether it's the real realtors fault by not bringing that up ahead of time and i might add commissioner that that um, map mm -hmm. with variances mm -hmm. uh, applications some of those variances were uh, submitted and processed in the 90s, mm -hmm. so just over I, time. If I wanted to be a, an unscrupulous person, uh, I would say, ah, you know, go ahead and buy it. You'll get it through the county, no problem. 
Mr. Chairman, hey, Mr. Chair Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, can I make a comment? Yeah, is this Pat? Also, yeah, go ahead, Pat, please. Yes, it is. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that um, this um, is in keeping with the uh, prevailing development pattern on Silver Beach Loop Road for a long time, I think going back to the 60s at least, if not further back. And so, you know, I don't. You know, just, of course, you know, the everybody else is doing it argument isn't enough to support a variance, but I just wanted to point that out, that uh, that probably would go towards um, you guys deciding whether it's in the public interest to grant the variance or not. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. Okay. I'm really not. Right. Because we've been doing and, it. And, no, and you make, and Bill, you make valid points. I just wanted to point that out. Okay. Director Callahan. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would echo what Pat said, but just to ease the conscience of the board, in my view, the reason I'm interjecting myself is this is the sort of thing the textbooks literally say, planning textbooks for 40 years and more, that you, you should rezone the entire area. The reason we haven't, I can only assume, is that this, this has been going on for 30 years or more, and the staff at the time probably first didn't know that. Secondly, we didn't have all of these at that moment. They've occurred over time. In hindsight, this is the sort of thing that would make sense to have a little overlay district, say all of this area is exempt from setbacks in this way. And that makes it, makes it legit from the get-go. But I, I would echo what Pat has said. In this case, you do have grounds for a variance. And so I, I'm very entirely comfortable with the approval. Um, question, and I guess maybe this is more for Mary. Do you know how long the applicant has owned the lot? I do not, Chairman. The applicant is present. But this is not a public But this area. isn't a public I cannot. I understand that. that sort of exchange. Right. I, know, I realize that. That's why I asked staff. <laughs> Leslie, any thoughts? Well, I just look at it two different ways. I mean, my cousin's lived here forever. My cousin has, I mean, literally you could slide off the road into their guest house. I mean, it's it's right there. So because it would have grounds for an overlay for a, a zone change, you know, I'm comfortable with that. The other thing, too, is it's on its own. If there were no other variances in this area on its own, the topography is such that they can't have a home on this property without this variance. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's kind of a, a double thing. It, it meets this criteria, it meets this criteria. So I'm, I'm comfortable with it. And that road, they know. I mean, everybody on who lives on that road, they go nice and slow up there. A lot of them have golf carts. They take their golf carts down to the, the lake and their um, things. So I'm, I'm comfortable with this. Any other comments? I, I think, um, Director Kellyanne, I think you're absolutely right. The area probably needs to be rezoned. I am thoroughly familiar with it, although I've not driven it with specific uh, since this came before us, but I have over time. Um, and clearly, variances have been issued, which, is, which to your point is the reason that the whole area should be rezoned. I think, though, Commissioner Brooks makes a valid point, which is I, I think there's a lot of folks coming up here, and I think the word is out, sooner or later you're going to get what you want in Idaho. And whether or not that area should even have been developed to the extent that it is, I don't know. It is a narrow road. I, and I'm looking at Eastside Highway District's concerns, which I expect will be met before a structure is erected, if that's a fair, fair statement. Uh, and they, they do express concerns. but. Given the history of the area and, and what's happened, and I owned a lot very much, very similar to this, which we sold some years ago. Um, so I do understand the hassles of building, and ours was a steep lot on a slope, but um, perhaps it should be rezoned. Nevertheless, I really don't have grounds to reject it. So motion. I move we approve case number VAR 20-0005, First Light Properties LLP for a 25 foot variance to the 25 foot yard setback with conditions recommended by the hearing examiner. I second the motion. Aye. 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 So case uh, VAR 20-0005 is hereby approved. Thank you. So moving on, case number VAR, which is another variance, 20-0006. 
First Light Properties LLP 25 foot variance to the 25 foot front yard setback on a quarter acre parcel of land. Again, in the ag suburban zone, Mary. Thank you, Chairman, Commissioners. Take me just a moment here. To just want to remind everybody on the phone to mute yourself until you're ready to speak. This, this is case number VAR 20 0006. First Light Properties request for variance from um, minimum required setbacks in the ag sub zone. Again, this platted lot is adjacent directly immediately to the south of the lot that we were just speaking of, same property ownership, same location. This is the applicant's proposed site plan. Here are some site photos by the applicant depicting the steep slopes and topography challenges for construction. Here is again the slope category map showing this lot to the north and the red depicting the extremely steep slope limiting the area for cons new construction. Here again is the map that we just we're sharing, the hearing examiner did recommend approval of this application as well on October 1st. And I would stand for any questions. Very similar to the previous one. None. I do have a question, once again, going back to the highway district. Uh, the last sentence in their comment, should this variance request be approved, the district respectfully requests the opportunity to review and comment on updated site plans Please do not hesitate to contact us with any additional questions. Will that, in fact, be done? Yes, at time of building permit application. Okay, I'm fine. And that's included in the hearing examiner's conditions. Uh, okay. That's correct. So, yeah. Just want to make sure get it on the public record. Okay. Motion. I move we approve case number VAR 20-0006, First Light Properties LLP for 25-foot variance to the 25-foot front yard setback uh, with um, conditions recommended by the hearing examiner. I second the motion. Aye. 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 Aye, and the motion is carried. So case number VAR 20-0006 is hereby approved. So that concludes the deliberation segment of our meeting this morning. And so now we move on to signings. And we have two signings this morning. I'm ready for a motion? Yeah. Okay. I move we. I'm looking for Kathy. That's right. Right. <laughs> All right, I move we execute the order of decision for case number ZON 20-001, Marty and Paulette, how's that? Eberly. Eberly, and to execute uh, ordinance 555. I second the motion. Aye. 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 Aye, executing the order of decision. Oh, you have. And so the next, uh, okay, yeah. so this is the, uh, that's the decision, this is the ordinance. Oh, that's the ordinance, yes, okay, the okay. Okay. Yeah. I move, we execute. Order of decision for case number ZON 20-0005, Michael Andrews, and also execute ordinance 556. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. 
Aye, and the motion is carried, executing the order of decision. And so that concludes the signing segment of our uh, business meeting this morning. Going on to our business segment, community development update. There are no items. Public comment. Hearing none, 927, meeting adjourned. I Thank thought you. you were going to keep us in there for at least an hour. Thanks, Pat. <laughs>